Hi, I'm John Hart, and welcome back to Mr. America. Hart, we are having a good show today. Listen, I'm going to give you, I'll go over, let's say, uh, one of the best routines ever made. It was extremely popular uh, back in the 80s. Yeah, back in the 80s. And to this day, I've used it on many, many clients to grow new muscle. And I've suggested it to many people over the years who have done very, very well with it. And it actually came out in this very book right here. This is a classic book called Heavy Duty by Mike Menser. And it was quite innovative at the time when it first came out. Uh, you know, Mike was a professional bodybuilder and massive, in fact, well before his time. And at the time, he was known as the guy with these, you know, high intensity training routines and very short routines compared to what was the standard of the day at the time, which was quite a bit of work, six day a week workouts, training body parts two or three times a week. Meanwhile, he did them once a week and he only worked out three times a week at that point. So, and he trained clients that way too, just like I did. I was one of his clients at one point and then we became friends long term. So this routine, um, giving to you uh, and we're going to discuss two things here, okay? And I'm going to kind of segue into the second part, and you'll hear how I do it as I describe the routine. The beauty of this routine was, uh, we're gonna, oh, let me give you the two topics. The first is the routine itself, and then secondly, warm-ups. If there's anything, anything in my comments section down below in all of my videos that I keep seeing, I see a lot of questions about warm-ups how to warm up, are they necessary, and all of that. And all of you all who have watched my videos, you know, I do believe that they're necessary. Okay, I think you're absolutely insane if you're walking in the gym and you're using any kind of intensity, using any kind of weight, for that matter, and going in cold and lifting a heavy weight, cold. Even if you're using a slower rep cadence of a you know, four-second concentric, four-second eccentric, for example, four seconds up, four seconds down, you're insane. And, uh, you know, you're taking a chance. And it's a, a, a big risk uh, to do such a thing, as a matter of fact, because when you do that, uh, if you do rupture a tendon that's too cold, uh, well, it's on you, and it's going to be a $20,000 repair. Uh, and generally, it's a long rehab for such things for most muscles. And if it's a big muscle group like a quadricep, no, you'll be in rehab for a year to a year and a half. And if both quadriceps tear, well, that tendon is so thick and your life will change. I know a man who did, in fact, tear both quadricep tendons right off his kneecap. And man, oh man, he, he tore it doing deadlifts, by the way, because eh, he didn't think he needed to, do, to warm up too much. And so he tore both quad tendons right off the bone doing deadlifts, not squats, deadlifts. And uh, yeah, about 18 months in therapy and learning how to walk again, all of that. So his life took a major change, missed work, you know, career change, the whole thing, terrible. So anyway, I don't wanna go too far off uh, the path here. So the routine itself, in Heavy Duty, the original book, push, pull, legs. There's a beauty in this routine and there's also a negative to this routine. The beauty of it is, Push on a Monday, three non-consecutive days. So it would be like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for example. A great routine. On the push day, chest, shoulders, and triceps. He, he called it a push day. Um, your chest work, you'll warm up on the first compound chest movement that day. So you're going to do your chest exercise. So on, on any of the pressing motions that day, so you're going to do warm-ups up, warm on, let's say, incline barbell presses. Okay, And once you've done that and then commenced with the rest of the workout and you move from the chest work into the shoulder work, it does not matter what shoulder work you're doing. Your shoulders are pretty pumped up and pretty warmed up at that point. At that point, there's no more warm-ups necessary. And by the way, we're talking about doing one single set, one single working set of each exercise after that initial warm-up on the chest work, okay? So you do your chest work, and then you do one single exercise, one single set per exercise in this routine. 
And the routine actually is dumbbell flies, for example, supersetted with incline presses on the chest. So flat dumbbell flies, incline barbell press. You're going to warm up on the incline press, right? Because that's the most compound exercise. It warms up your chest, your elbows, your triceps, shoulders, all of it. Once you do that, you go ahead, pick your dumbbells to do your flies or maybe a fly machine. Pec deck, take that to failure, one set. You immediately go on over to the incline press. Take that to failure, one set. Boom, you're on to your shoulder work. Shoulders. Lateral raises, supersetted with some overhead presses, whichever type you choose, barbell, dumbbells. Set of rear delts, which I like moving the rear delts onto the back workout myself. So that's one of the things I disagree with the routine on this book. But nevertheless, he included rear delts on that workout. And then triceps. Triceps, you're going to do tricep press downs, an isolation exercise for your triceps, supersetted with a compound movement like a dip or a close grip bench press. When you do that workout, it's very intense. It'll be over with very quickly. One single set, one super set of one set each of each exercise. By the time that's done, you're going to know you worked out if you gave it your all. And then take a day off. You come back on Wednesday, and now you're into your back and your biceps workout. And on that back and bicep workout, it also includes some trap work, deadlifts, and biceps. So what would that look like? It would look like a pullover movement, some sort of a pullover, supersetted with a pull down with an undergrip like this. You take both of those to positive failure, boom, boom, nonstop, you go back to back, and then after that, you go on into your deadlifts or your shrugs. So either one of those work, deadlifts or shrugs. Lastly, pick a bicep exercise. You do some curls, some good curls. That's the end of your back and bicep workout. After you're done with that workout, take a day off. Now you took, you've taken two workouts, the third one, the leg workout, push, pull, legs. Now you're onto your, your uh, leg workout. You're going to do in that workout an isolation exercise, such as the leg extensions for the quads, supersetted with either squats or leg presses. Now, do you warm up on the leg extension or do you warm up on the squats or leg presses? Which one do you think? The compound movement, the bigger compound movement, the squat or the leg press. You warm up on that. Then you go ahead and you'll see how you're ready to go. You're more than ready to go. So to failure, leg extension, supersetted with squat or leg press. Follow that up with a leg curl and then move on to standing calf raise or seated calf raise, maybe alternate them each workout. And that's the end of your week. Occasionally do a set of plate crunches for your abdomen, floor crunches to keep your abdominals super strong along the way, although they get a lot of indirect work from everything else. Now, I said, that's all the good, the push, pull, leg workout. The good about it was in succession, when you do this workout, you only need to warm up at the very beginning, and then you move through the rest of the workout rather quickly. And you take everything to failure at that point in one set. It's no big deal. You're in, you're out. It's a 30-minute workout, and you're gone. Very intense. That's the really good. The bad is that there's a little bit of overlapping going on right there where it assumes, for example, uh, that... There is such a thing as only push and only pull and then legs. It's the upper body stuff. There's an overlapping effect that happens quite a bit. There's a lot of indirect work that happens quite a bit for certain body parts. For example, when you do the chest work and you're doing a fly motion, whether that's with dumbbells or a machine or a pec deck, your bicep, your bicep gets worked. And when you take it to failure, it's going to failure with your chest. So... The next workout, two days later, when you do your, bice uh, your back and your biceps, your biceps are getting worked yet again. You see? The other thing, when you do, well, the mistake was putting rear delts in that first workout with the chest, shoulders, and triceps. The rear delts belong with the back workout on Wednesday. So 
So I would move the rear delts. I always do move the rear delts onto that back workout. It makes sense. It makes perfect sense. And then the third problem with the workout is, is the triceps. When you do chest, shoulders, and triceps, it assumes that your triceps are only responsible for extending your forearm. Okay? Your triceps, the long head, it attaches on the back of your shoulder, and it serves to pull down, close this joint when you pull together like this. So it's not just extension of your elbow. Okay, that's what your tricep does do, one function. The other function, the long head of your tricep that attaches back on your shoulder blade, it works with your lat. Your lat and your tricep both, boom, close the joint. So it's not just biceps and lats pulling. You're also using the long head of your triceps. So there's a whole issue right there. You know, with a lot of overlapping on the upper body muscles, you're, you're getting a lot of indirect work on your biceps when you train chest. You're getting a lot of indirect work on your triceps when you train back, for example. So they're actually getting two workouts in the course of the week, two days apart, and then legs hits. So the leg workout is pretty much on its own, separate you know, from the rest of the two workouts. It does not take on... Uh, as much overlapping, let's say, as you do. When you do the deadlifts on the back workout, there's going to be overlapping because your legs, as my friend found out, the one with the torn quadricep tendons, uh, patellar tendons, actually, when he found out, he messed around and found out, didn't he? When he found out how much you use your legs on a back workout when you do deadlifts, uh, you know, there's the reality. So what do you do? When you do that one workout, uh, do leg presses on the Friday workout. You don't do squats. That's, this is about the closest we can get when you do your deadlifts on the back workout instead of shrugs. You can do shrugs or deadlifts. When you do shrugs, then you squat on the Friday leg workout. Okay? I'll put it up on the screen. The whole thing's up on the screen. So the reality on this is, is there's no perfection, perfect way of doing this workout or any split for that matter. You have to do your best to coordinate it or organize it in such a way that there isn't a ton of overlapping. And Mike thought of that. And in his second book, Heavy Duty 2, I'll put that up on the screen, uh, he did address overlapping and he created what he called the ideal routine. And that did allow for more upper body growth because, you see, when you do this routine in Heavy Duty 1, the upper body muscles for a while do pretty well. And then what happens is, is they quickly get overtrained. And when overtraining sets in on the upper bottom body muscles, especially on the bicep and the tricep, then they won't grow. Meanwhile, the legs are progressing, you see. So we want to have progress all across the board. So his answer was heavy duty too. He changed the routine. And that one, you can check one of my other videos I did on the ideal routine. I'll put a link down below in the uh, video description for this video. So you can go and watch that video once you're done with this one. And you'll see what happened with the, with the ideal routine in Heavy Duty 2. Um, now I mentioned warming up as being the second big topic we were going to cover here. Uh, that subject I get asked a lot about because we get into a big semantics game here. Okay, And the semantics game is this. If you take two or three warm-up sets to build up to a 400-pound squat, let's say, well, a lot of you guys out there will say that was four sets, right? Three warm-ups and one working set, four sets. I think not, and neither did Mike Menser, and neither do a lot of high-intensity trainees. Those are warm-ups. Neither did Dorian Yates. These are warm-ups, okay? Warm-ups are defined as whatever it takes to warm your body up. It's not a working set. They're not working sets. They're not taken to failure. They're not taken even to the point where you have lactic acid buildup. You don't want that before you do a working set. Lactic acid buildup means the byproducts of heavy work are building up within the muscle. And they actually interfere with being as powerful as you can be. So you don't want to do that before you do your all-out high-intensity set. So what do you do? I've described it before in many videos. You don't do a whole lot of reps. As you're warming up, you warm up with a few reps with a light weight, maybe 50% of your max. 
of your working set, 50%. Do maybe a set of 10 with that. But you could probably do 30 or 40, okay? And then maybe 75%. And you do a set of maybe five with that. But you could probably get 12 or 20 with that. So you're nowhere near failure, you get me? And then lastly, you're ready for your working set. That working set, that one set, that one all out set is all you need. And then of course, in the rest of the workout, if we're talking about chest, shoulders, and triceps, for example, the rest of that workout, when you get to shoulders and triceps, you're only doing one set of each exercise, no warm ups necessary, bam, there you go. Same thing with the back workout, same thing with the leg workout, okay? So warm ups. Warm ups are defined as whatever it takes to warm up, as I said. And I believe, depending on the time of year, I'm sitting here in my garage gym studio, and you can tell uh, I've, I've done a lot of videos in here. And you can see me once in a while, you know, wiping my forehead, depending on what time of year it is. Because here in the garage gym, it'll be pretty hot, even though I have insulation. It'll be very, very hot certain times of year. If I'm going to work out, I don't need a lot of warm-ups, right? Maybe one, maybe, maybe a couple of reps with a mid, mid-range wet, uh, weight, and I'm ready to go. That's it. Not a lot, okay? And so when it's cold, conversely, when it's really cold, obviously, I'm going to take more warm-ups. And I don't count those as sets, Okay. Some people, you've seen some of my recent videos, some people like Brad Schoenfeld, the scientist, he calls not to failure sets with your working weight. He calls those sets, and so do I. Because you're using your working weight, you're just stopping short of total failure. So a lot of those motor units in the muscle are being activated and are fired. And it's an all or nothing principle. So when they fire, you know, temporarily, they're done. They're weaker, weekend, and they're done firing. And that's it. So he's taking it away from his high-intensity working set, which he says he saves for the end. I'm saying to you, let's go right to it, just like Mike did in his book. Okay? So that's it for the warm-ups. That's it for heavy-duty one and the three-day push-pull legs workout. And I want to make a note to you guys. I've waved this book a few times up in front of the camera now, and I want you to know that this book has gained, as well as Heavy Duty 2, they've both gained quite a bit of popularity uh, and interest right now. Uh, with a lot of the new videos that have popped up on High Intensity Training and Mike Menser. Now, what's going on? Well, other than John Little, John Little has a YouTube channel. Uh, he has copyright to the material that he posts up, his audio files. Other than him, the, all of the audio videos that you're listening to when you hear a Mike Menser seminar, for example, they don't own the rights to most of them. I mean, 99% of them don't own the rights to those audio files. They've simply taken the intellectual property of MikeMenser.com, of Mike Menser Co., of Sharky Menser, Menser Sharky Enterprises, and there is a rightful owner to those things today. And when they choose to, they will have all those copyrighted materials taken down off of YouTube because they're copyrighted, and I'm sure lawsuits will ensue in certain cases. But if you ever see anybody who has downloads of books, of his books, Understand, if other than John Little, which he doesn't do downloads like that, uh, anybody else who does, those are pirated. Those they don't have the copyright to. So you're assisting them in continuing on with breaking whatever laws there are that, copy, that deal with copyright. Now, back to the book. So look, on the other hand, I have to say, a box of these books was given to me. A box of Heavy Duty 2 was also given to me. I've kept them in storage. As you know, if you watch any of my recent videos, I've had them in storage over the years along with some Heavy Duty journals. Uh, you know, that's another one of Mike's books that he booklets that he wrote. 
And these things are pristine, okay? This book, I'm not even opening it. Uh, you, you'll notice the pages are not even bent because they've never been read. This is an original print, and they've been kept in such great shape. Uh, I don't even like putting my fingerprints on these things. But uh, what are we doing here? I have a bunch of these that I've been offloading uh, selling because, again, uh, I was blessed a while back and being given these books, and um, I was thankful for it, and I just didn't know what I'd ever do with them. I thought I'd give some to my grandkids someday and, you know, whatever. <laughs> but I have more than I thought, so I'm selling them. And uh, if you want to go ahead and go to uh, my website, MrAmericaHeart.com, and do an inquiry as far as the pricing goes, I'll just tell you right now, uh, I've seen the prices recently. You should go online. Amazon, uh, go to eBay, go to either one of those, Amazon or eBay, and find Heavy Duty One with the white cover. Okay, this goes for who? Right now, someone says they only have one left. It's about twenty five hundred dollars. They're selling theirs for. Uh, that's kind of insane, right? So I'm not doing that, and uh, I'm not getting nuts with it like that. So there were some standard prices recently for used copies that were going on Amazon and eBay. And myself, uh, these are, as I said, new. The covers, uh, they've been kept in storage. They're in excellent condition. Uh, they've, you know, they've just been sitting on top of each other in a, in a container, <laughs> closed, airtight, as a matter of fact, uh, for a long time. So as I'm selling these off right now, I have about... Uh, about 15 of those right there that are left, those heavy-duty ones. And uh, there's about uh, 10 or so of the heavy-duty twos and a couple of heavy-duty journals left. So any of you who are interested, go to my website, MrAmericaHeart.com, and you can make an inquiry. Just hit the contact page, contact us page, and shoot an email to that. I'm happy to get a quote off to you. But understand, before you do it and before you act all shocked, because, yeah, it's a book, okay? It's a book. And yeah, they originally sold for $25. I'm not selling them for $25. These are collector items. These things right here are selling, you know, uh, used copies. We're selling for $250, $300. Okay? So you're getting a brand new, excellent copy and shipped to you in a great package as well. So it will be protected. Feel free to inquire about Heavy Duty 1, Heavy Duty 2, and Heavy Duty Journal. Those three, we have those. And for those of you that cannot find the wisdom of Mike Menser, I have a lot of those. Okay, so feel free. I'm happy to shoot you uh, the information. And that's it. So before you go, off to my left, you're going to see that disc right there. That's the subscribe button for this channel. Please give that thing a tap and let YouTube know how much you really love my channel. And then down below. You like the video? Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button right there. That lets YouTube know that you're really liking it. The algorithm loves it, and I love it too. I'll see you soon.